Welcome to episode 31 of the Liberty Mastermind podcast. I'm Joe Blow, along with my buddies Big Dog and Redbird. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 31, we're going to be covering security and the homestead. So, fellas, <laughs> security in the home, security in the homestead. I, I think Nicole Sauce was actually asking us, I think she's either on her episode with us, or maybe I talked to her on Zello, but she was asking about this topic particularly. I think that would be really cool to talk about at her her event, at her workshop. Really? So maybe we can I, uh, put this as a link to her website when that event happens, or maybe we can prepare something like a printout or a PDF that she can give to the people there, maybe just to keep in the back of our heads. Well, I'll be going to that. It's kind of my tentative plan. I, I uh, registered for the event, um, so I will be there. That's my game plan. I'm stoked. It's going to be homesteading topics and turning side hustles into main hustles. Should be fun. Hey, just so, so you, <clears throat> just so you know, Ox um, and the audience, I'm sure we'll hear it. Sometimes you your signal cuts out, so you'll start talking, and you're like, "Hey," and then there's a big space, and then everything you say next is really fast because I think the system is catching up with you. Yeah, um, which is really funny, and I love it. But I, I don't know if I don't think I? you're doing that on purpose. <laughs> I just okay. realized I was on mute, and I've been talking to you guys, and you guys haven't been acknowledging me at all. <laughs> Mm. You're like, what? And the I'm hell? like, what is going on? And then I look over and it's on mute. Yeah. Awesome. I've done that before. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we uh, FYI, we try to mute it. Like, whenever we're not talking in the conversation, we, we try to mute uh, the microphone so it doesn't pick up any ambient kind of background noises. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> uh, you know what I would like to do right up front in the episode uh, while we do our kind of intro talk? Uh, let's do this up front. If you want to be a guest on the show, head over to the website and click on the be a guest link. Yeah. Uh, also leave us some comments on the website on each, each article page. We'll have a little comment box. I think we're using discuss right now, uh, or on whatever platform you're on. Most visibly we'll check our comments on YouTube. Uh, there is an email contact us form on the website, Liberty mastermind podcast at gmail.com. Uh, I am on Instagram at Pat Leo on uh, what's my uncensored tactical on Instagram? Jack is rescue Jack. We're friends with each other. You can find us that way. And, and please leave us a rating and review on iTunes. And those of you that have already done that, we really appreciate that. That helps the show. Yep. And on the um, contact form for the show, um, we're we've started that Liberty profile thing. So yes, you may not have something that you may think is important to talk about, but your walk to freedom is important. So if you want to talk to us about that, yeah, you know, come on for a profile. That would be great. You don't have to own a company. You don't have to teach a cool course. You just, if you want to talk about what brought you out of the matrix or, you know, what, what made you take the red pill or whatever, and what, what kind of helps you live your life in a more free way or an enlightened way or your journey or your walk, we would love to have you. Yep. Agreed. Yeah, I said it last episode, but... The interview with Texas Joe was really, really good. You know, the the storytelling brought home a lot of the points that he made. So I really like that segment or well, episode that we're doing. So let's keep it up. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So let's let's uh, boil it down. Let's get into it. Security and the homestead or the home. I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be burping a lot because I just switched over to beer. So I don't know where God. the mute button is on this thing. <laughs> I'm not the I'm I'm good I'm learning but I'm not the greatest with this pr- audio program so hey, have you tried muting Skype? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that didn't work because oh, it catches it takes the input from my mic. The audience doesn't care about this, but I'm gonna burn right, occasionally. Right, right. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> in other words, really it's, loud. It's All the burping is pad. In other words. Yeah. <laughs> uh, screw um, the homestead. So let's start this off with the. We, we kind of hinted at it last week. I was leaving my place, and it was the evening time, about 8 o'clock. I left my home and went about maybe, I don't know, 100 yards, hit the stop sign, 
Look to my left. I could see a sheriff's truck parked there with its lights off. I made my right. Sheriff's lights came on. They followed me. I thought, ah, right. So they pulled me over. Um, the reason they pulled me over. Heroin they, and hookers. Yeah. Well, that would that would make a whole lot more sense, you know, but the whole I pissed off the animal control. So they got their their uh, sheriff buddies to kind of stalk me. But the reason they made contact with me was the my rear license plate was not illuminated. There's a little bulb, you know, above the plate that illuminates it at night. Mine was not. So that gave them reason to make contact. And without getting into the whole story, which is probably another episode, uh, unrelated or more in the security vein, that gave them again. That gave them reason to make contact, or isn't that what it's called, Pat? What, making yeah, contact. It's called, a, um, it's called a precursor, a precursor stop, or a cursory stop. I forget the term. I've I've been off the job for about two years with my military deployment, but um, <laughs> the Supreme Court. While I don't believe that what they decide is right or wrong, I. Don't, I'm sh- you usually get it wrong, but what they have said currently, because they flip flop sometimes, which I don't understand either. That means at one point you had it wrong is law enforcement can use a separate reason to detain you and stop you and start a conversation with you. They can, they can use the charge of something like a traffic violation in order to affect some other conversation and get other information from you. So, and even for an arrest, like if I suspect you're a murderer but you crash into someone's house and then drive away, well, I could stop you for the house thing, even though I also really want you for the murder. It might be a terrible example. I'm not always great with metaphors, but I can stop you for a traffic violation if I have something else in mind that I want to... Well, that's in- exactly... I mean, that's exactly what they did. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, to keep the story short, I upset the animal control gods with my poultry uh, here in the city limits. And, and I didn't play nicely. I didn't respect the authority of the uh, animal <laughs> control officer. So she got her buddies involved and they made contact with me. Again, the headlight or the, I mean, the little light out over the license plate was the excuse, but they wanted to detain me until the animal control officer that evening could come over, which was like 30 minutes, well, 20 minutes later. And give me a citation for something stupid that we'll probably talk about in the future. So, yeah, I mean, you nailed it or, you know, your description nailed it. So all that is just a story to. It's a. What's up? Sorry. It's it's a pretext. No, no. Pretext stop. So um, okay. when you don't have probable cause for something or you don't have already a legal reason to detain someone, you can use a pretext which means a different reason to stop someone is all it means. Pretext. It's okay. Most commonly used with traffic. Well, that's that's fantastic. And I'm telling telling this story to the audience, to everyone, to hopefully use it as a, I don't know, a takeaway. Like, take a peek at your vehicle, you know, and um, turn on the lights. Make sure you have everything in order so there is not you, – you take away that pretext. Mm-hmm. Is that, that's what you said, Pat. Yep, pretext. Pre, you, take, you, you take away that pretext for someone to make contact with you for law enforcement. Now, the, um, important, the important thing about that is they don't have a lawful authority to stop and detain you. That's why they're using a pretext. So if you cut out that, that ability for them to stop you for traffic charges, you cut out their ability to force them to detain you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, because otherwise, if they had probable cause to detain you, they just do it whenever the fuck they want. So if they were waiting for a traffic charge to stop you on, that means they didn't have a good enough reason besides that. That's all. Yeah. And I've heard of, you know, you might want to check your check, you know, your city. Yeah, I am not a lawyer. Yeah, Yeah, none of us are. We're, We're just kicking out ideas. But. I remember back in Texas, I think it was, they were, people were kind of raising a fuss that if you had a license plate cover that obscured it in any way, that gave law enforcement a reason to, like, they could use that as an excuse to pull you over. So, yeah, I remember um, that. You remember that? So, hopefully, the takeaway is keep things, keep this in mind and maybe 
do a walk around of your vehicle, make sure the, you know, turning signals, headlights, running lights, whatever, <laughs> license plate lights, make sure everything's in working order. You, uh, Pat, you have anything to add on to that? You know, when you're doing your beat thing and keeping your eyes peeled for people, is, is there anything else you're looking for? <laughs> For yeah, here's another cool in, <laughs> <For perps. laughs> another cool piece of insider info from the law enforcement world. The amount of traffic violations that I can stop someone for are fucking staggering. There are hundreds and hundreds of them. Mm -hmm. So usually yeah. they're all in what we call one chapter of your legal code for your state or your legal um, statutes. So if you get your state, go to your state website where they'll list all the state crimes that your state thinks are crimes. Even your county and your city will sometimes write things about traffic, but for the most part, uh, the state that I work in, there are so many different traffic violations, and they are so fucking confusing that even when I, I've been trained, I've seen other people do it, I've had it explained to me, I've done it myself, and then later, when I go back and try and stop someone for the same violation, I'm often like, I'm like, fuck, I'm like, I know it's like a taillight type issue thing, I go to the state website, I search, I hit the search tab, I'm like, tail light. And they're like, nope, sorry, that doesn't work, because where it's written, it's called brake light. And I'm like, fuck. So, like, even <laughs> even with the search function, I oftentimes don't know what the fuck to write on my ticket when I'm like, this guy's got to get a ticket. Like, I have to write this down. I've already been on this traffic stop for 30 fucking minutes. I get the paper book out. I'm flipping through. I'm like, oh, great, this is going to help. There's fucking 60 pages of traffic violations. <laughs> So just so the public knows, there are so, so, so many reasons we can pull someone over for on a, in a car. There are also wow. so many reasons we can stop someone on a bicycle. There are also so many <clears throat> reasons we can stop someone walking down the street, even if they're on the sidewalk. Like, it's fucking ridiculous. So the no good, shit. Now, here's, here's kind of the yin-yang of that. One is, I'm going to do a show on ride-alongs next on Uncensored Tactical. So one is, if you're riding along with the cop and you say... Hey, can you just, I don't want you to force, you know, stop people for no reason, but if you see a traffic violation that you could pull someone over for, can you just point it out to me so I know? Mm -hmm. and, like, and if that's all you do, that's all you'll do all shift, right? You'll be so busy stopping cars because you'll never go fucking 10 feet without seeing a violation. So you'll really, what you'll learn from that is there are cops that see hundreds, sometimes thousands of traffic violations all for a 12 hour shift, right? And never stop a single car for it. So we're not fucking evil devil asshole jerks that are like, I'm gonna, every single person's gonna learn on my street to date. No, we don't care. We have so much other shit to do. So we let so much go. And the problem is, you'll never see, if you're in your own car, and you're driving around, and you see a cop sitting there, you'll never see all the people he doesn't pull over, because he doesn't pull them over. So it's, it's kind of a hidden, it's kind of a... It's kind of a nice thing the cops do that's hidden. So we use our discretion the right way often, but no one sees that because there's no action, there's no documentation, there's no written report, there's no public info. Like it just it doesn't exist because we didn't do it. So we made the decision consciously to be like, I am not gonna fuck with those people for that. So that's one side well, of it. The other wow. side of it is the state has so much fucking legal power. I don't believe it's righteous, but it's, it's a legal power to stop almost anybody for almost anything and detain them and identify them and write them a ticket or question them or do whatever. So that's two sides of that. That's fascinating. So so the takeaway is check out your state uh, statutes, is that what you said? Yeah. Or maybe, you know, poke Every, around. See if, if you, you can... go to any state.gov, if you just Google, you know, uh, every state pretty much in 2018 has their own, all of their legal code online in one place. It's usually <clears throat> pretty easy to find. And they're usually, even though it doesn't make the most sense and it's legal speak, even though it's not organized the best as far as sections in the code, like taillights, brake lights, headlights aren't always all in the same section, but usually traffic, mm -hmm. you just go criminal code, no, uh, regulations, okay, traffic, okay, usually it's all like in the same tab. If that makes sense, yeah, it's worth checking out if you're if you got fucking ten minutes. Well, well, the attorney acquaintance that I connected with to kind of assist me with this whole careful and I'm yeah, uh, he was looking through he he on his computer was searching through all these codes and statutes and whatever. So 
Yeah. yeah. What? You might not want to talk about any of that until after all of this is passed. <laughs> Fair enough. So there's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, yeah? Okay, so you can prevent interaction with law enforcement that you don't want as much as it sucks by doing a quick little piece of research. Um, just check your state statutes, and you'll find all sorts of weird things that you can be stopped for. And I think... You'd be wasting your time if you tried to make sure you were within your statutes for every single one of those, because almost every time you get in your car, you violate one of those. Um, There's so many that are so obscure and so weird, but sometimes uh, people that are just traffic cops, like they focus on that. They've memorized quite a few of those, and they're really good at finding weird, unique reasons to stop people legally, even though it's not necessarily moral. So it'd be a waste of time to try and say, I'm going to fit inside every box they give me. That's that is going to be a long road, no, no pun intended. So make sure some mm. of the big ones, like you said, Ox, make sure your fucking headlights work. Make sure your taillights work. If they're a crack down the middle, but they still look pretty good, well, they're, in some states, some cops can still stop you for that. Like if, you, if you're supposed to have two mirrors, but you really only have one, but you kind of have a middle mirror, like just go the extra step. If you want to avoid contact with law enforcement do your best do your due diligence to make sure that your car at least looks like it fucking doesn't have any problems that's all. <laughs> fair enough so that's one way for you to update your security um it's one way for you to not get pulled over when you don't want to get pulled over um here's something else that a lot of people don't know too about traffic since we're on it like let's say you're ubering somewhere right or you're a passenger in a car whether it's an uber or a lyft or it's one of your friends a lot of times, and I know in my state anyways, this is not legal advice. This is just something that I think is interesting, if I'm correct. I don't know. Uh, in my state, <laughs> if I stop a driver for something that is only related to traffic, like Ox, you're driving Jack around, right? Jack's the passenger in the car. Ox runs a stop sign. I pull, I pull over Ox in Ox's car. I go, hey, Ox, let me see your license, registration, proof of insurance, right? Because that's what protects people, insurance, right? So... <laughs> Yeah. Jack goes at the, and the passenger seat Jack takes off his seatbelt and Jack goes peace I'm out of here a properly trained law enforcement who is law enforcement officer in my state by policy and procedure and legally should say okay have a nice day I'm just going to keep dealing with Ox the driver of the vehicle so a lot of people don't know that that the passenger can get out and walk down the road and the cop for the most part I mean there are some weird exceptions uh for the most part, the cop, the most he can do is go, okay, bye. Hmm. So a lot of people think that when you're in a car and you get pulled over, you're stuck there and you're detained. Well, your motion has stopped, but unless the cop specifically detains you as a passenger, for the most part, you're free to leave. I think he'd be uh, more than likely, you'd get shot if he did that today. Uh <laughs> There are some really bad law enforcement officers out there. Absolutely. Uh, well, and, and I've all... Go ahead, Pat. Here's, here's the thing. The Supreme Court, as far as the last time I heard, they said, yep, that's fine. The One of the trump cards that an officer will have is uh, personal safety. So let's say... Mm-hmm. whatever time I was it, in fear I know, for my I was life. In fear. So that is kind of a trump card, although I, dis- I disagree with it sometimes. I think sometimes it's appropriate, sometimes it's not. Like yeah. I, I, I pulled someone over and they wouldn't, I tried to pull someone over. They wouldn't stop, wouldn't stop, wouldn't stop high speed <clears> pulled into someone's driveway where there's a big family gathering and there's a group of family in front of the car and there's the two people in the car and they start to bail out and they're going to mingle in with the family and the family's coming towards me and I'm going towards the truck and it's, I know it's a drug house and I'm like, fuck, I'm like, I'm like, nope, both of you stay in the fucking car. And they're like, oh, psh, man. And I'm like. I'm like, let me figure this out for five fucking seconds. And then I talk to the driver. I'm like, passenger, I'm sorry I held you, but you're free to go. You know, do whatever you got to do. I talked to the driver. I wrote him a little written warning. I said, have a nice day. I'm out of here. I try not to abuse that. I was really young when I did it. I learned afterwards that even though I only temporarily detained the guy, unless there was a some sort of very serious safety issue, the guy would have been free to go the whole time. I was, fuck yeah, I was scared. I don't know those fucking people. And it was a bad neighborhood. It was a bad time. The car wouldn't stop. I didn't know, right. you know what I had going on. So it's always, it's a, it's a thankless job, man. It's, you lose, it's a lose-lose everything you do. <laughs> yeah. 
But you get free sodas at the convenience store, though, right? Mm-hmm. Free coffee. <laughs> free co- <laughs> I don't drink the coffee or soda from convenience stores, so I don't. I don't reap oh. that great benefit of their job. <laughs> well, that, that's actually uh, I'm glad you said that. that. That answers something I've always been curious about. Is you know I've been in vehicles that were pulled over and people ask for my ID. I'm like. Uh, yeah, that's the thing they can ask, and that's the thing how they say it too. That's fucking tricky. They, you got your ID? <laughs> yeah, like, hey, do you have an ID on you? And you're like, oh, he just asked for my ID. Well, he didn't demand it. He asked if you have one. Like, so we do that shit all that we are. We get really good at lying, <clears throat> and, and the problem I have is when people don't differentiate when they say cops are trained to lie. Well, training's not the right word. We get really good at it just because we get good at it. Like we learn how to, we learn. It doesn't mean we're trained. So if, if my, if I'm reading the state statute and says you can ask politely for something, but you cannot demand it. I'm like, okay, well, give me a second. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Then I'll just ask politely. I'll never demand it. I'll be like, can you please stop? Can you please come over here? Is there any way you can hand me your ID? Hey, do you happen to have an ID on you? Like, none of that is a detention of a suspect. That's just two people talking. So, mm-hmm. yeah, we get we get sneaky like that, which I'm thinking is probably part of what happened in your case, even though we're not do- going over details, Ox. Because it sounds like if they used yeah. a pretext stop to stop you, then they may have said, hey, since you're here, also tell me about this other thing, and you would have felt like, I have to tell him. He's a cop, right? <laughs> Tell them about the other thing with the with the birds. Yeah. Oh no, they just held me and wrote me a citation for the tail light, and uh, kind of held me there. And then animal control showed up. So no, I, I never see them about animal control. Well, but anyway, anyway. It, again, it was just a curiosity that I always had in the back of my mind. Like, if, if I'm not even involved in driving, I'm just sitting there minding my own business. And it's a routine traffic stop. Like, can law enforcement go, hey, you know, let me see your ID or can I see it or you have it or whatever? Now, here's the other thing. You might not know the reason your vehicle is being stopped, right? As a mm-hmm. passenger, the cop knows why he stopped you. And the cop should know that it's only for traffic. And he doesn't have to tell you that. He has to tell you part of that. Um, and it hmm. depends on what state you're in. It depends on who's driving you around. Now, if the cop in my state, if the cop stops the driver and maybe the passenger for something he thinks is criminally related, he can detain everybody in the car. Like, let's say, let's say. I oh, that. okay. So as I'm walking up to the car, it's only traffic, but then I smell marijuana cause it's a devil's herb, right? Marijuana. So now that I smell drugs, I have probable cause to detain everybody in the car. At least this shit changes all the time, but what I remember of it. So you might think that as a passenger, you got pulled over and it's because of a stop sign. So you're free to go. So you get out and you run Fuck no. when you are actually being detained and you just didn't know it yet. And the cop says, Hey, stop. And you go, no, I'm free to go. Well, he ordered you, Hey, stop. And you thought, so you got, don't use this stuff. If you're going to put this stuff in your playbook, make sure you speak to a lawyer first, make sure you do your research. And I am not advocating that anything I say on this podcast is legal advice, just to be extra clear. So, this is just food for thought. All food yeah. for thought. So, um, so moving on. How about we move on to the homestead, fellas? Yes, the actual home. Yes, <laughs> I was one day. I was J- Jack. You have anything more on the the making contact stuff or no? You no, roll? no. Moving. Okay. So I was in, I was kind of like uh, shaving in the bathroom one day, my face, <laughs> and getting ready to head out. And I heard a knock at the door. And I figured, yeah, it's probably like UPS dropping off a package, something like that. I didn't think anything of it. And knocked one more time. And again, I'm kind of getting ready to go. I don't think anything of it. And so maybe 30 minutes later, I go outside to kind of look for a package and see what's going on. And I saw my neighbor out there, uh, my immediate neighbor. And he's like, hey, did uh, anybody uh, anybody knock on your door recently? And I was like, yeah, I was showering, getting ready, and I heard a knock on the door. I figured it was UPS. He was like, yeah, they knocked on my door, and I opened it, and it was some dude standing there with a package standing on the porch, and he was like, hey, uh, I think I got this uh, 
package delivered to me, but I think it's for you. And so the neighbor sensed something that was just a smidge squirrely about it, the situation. And he started to step out of his front door to the porch. And a dude, another dude, a second dude rushed from beside the house up to the first dude on the patio on the porch. And so it's clearly going to be like a, you know, like get jacked or shove my neighbor in his home and rob him. I don't know, something like that. And so as my neighbor notices this dude bolting from around the corner of the house, he lifts up his shirt, grabs his handgun and starts to unholster it. And those two guys bolted. Oh, so, weird. yeah, that kind of spooked me because that could have been me answering the door. And whoa, 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 whoa. Guns don't yeah. save lives. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. You, you're just lying. Uh, totally. <laughs> Lying to you guys and everybody listen. So that got me thinking, what, you know, what are the weaknesses in my homestead, my home security, and how can I beef them up and maybe like deter people like that? You know, how can I be more on the ready for stuff like that? So one thing that I did was, you know, the, the old go to put up signs that I have a dog and I do have a dog, a big old, mm-hmm. uh, a pit bull female. And, um, so I put up signs on my front door, on the gates, on the back gate everywhere, you know, Hey, heads up. <laughs> I got a dog and I didn't just get the sign, you know, beware of dog because my thought was not every knucklehead that's going to try to maybe get in my yard or come up to my front door can read. So I got the one that's got the picture of the dog, a really mean looking dog. And it says like, you know, be beware of dog. So I got that combo. So one example of something that I did that I think adds another layer of deterrence to my homestead. There are other things, but what do you guys think? A dog is actually my number one on my list of tips that I wrote down for this episode. Really? So having a dog in the house, but not advertising it or? No, yeah. Put a sticker up on the window by your door or put it on your door. Um, Put a little sign by your mailbox, wherever you want. Uh, That's part of it. And the other part of it is that you need to have a dog that will bark when you're not home or even when you are. Mm -hmm. So even if it's a super big dog, if it's really quiet, people might still go into your house if they don't see signs of an active dog. So even little dogs prevent burglaries. Oh yeah. No, that's a great, that's a great, uh, suggestion because, um, you know, when I first moved into this place and my dog, she would bark at little sounds. I I tried to stop that behavior. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, no, 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 no. Actually, I want to kind of encourage that. I want her to be, you know, protecting the homestead barking. So, you know, one thing to keep in mind, if you're, if you're not, that's speaking of her, she's over there. Here, buddy. You know, if you are sort of stifling the dog, like actually, you might want to think about encouraging that behavior as long as it's not excessive. But yeah, mm-hmm. I like that reminder, dude. Uh, so, that's that's the most, as far as my personal, what I've seen and, and the people that I work with that specialize in burglaries, like what we've all seen is it's really, really uncommon to have a legitimate burglary in a house where there's an active dog. Really uncommon. Hmm. Very cool. Um, let's see. I got a really good one for you. Up? So you mentioned that your buddy uh, almost getting ambushed at his front door, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's I have that as number seven on my list here, but we'll use it as number two. Here we go, number two. Uh, door protocol. So this is it's actually love it. It's actually pretty common. Um, this is one of the ways. So one of the ways people are going to get in your house is they're going to go through your front door once you open it for them. So and this isn't all like a forced entry. This isn't a um, a home invasion. This is just someone going in to steal shit. So there's a number of ways that you need to be aware of what happens when you open that front door. So this is what I call like visitor pr- protocol. So if someone knocks with a package, right? I, I'm not on like mm-hmm. super red alert, but I grab my gun. I go to the front door. I look out the window. Now the first, my, I can see my driveway and I can see the street where any normal 
person would park their car if they were going to park and walk out to my door. I can see, I can see the front door, the little sidewalk, the driveway, and the street. I can see all of it. So if someone knocks on my door and I don't see a vehicle, I are, it's already a red flag unless it's a neighbor that I know. And if it's not a neighbor that I know, why is someone coming to my house on foot that I don't know? Okay, so something's mm-hmm. up. And I don't, I don't mean they're trying to kill me. I just mean there's something that's up. Then you're going to look at the way they're dressed. Do they really need money? Are they kind of hurting? Do they not fit in the neighborhood? Like, are you in a low-income neighborhood and someone with a suit on? Well, that, that's weird because you don't have a car and you're wearing a suit. Where'd you walk from? Like, what, what do you want? So just match what they're wearing. Maybe they have a business, some type of business collared shirt on. But they're here to install cable, but there's no cable truck. So when they go, oh, I'm installing cable up and down the street. Okay, well, you're not installing cable here. Get out. So... Uh, the first thing is your immediate glance. So what doesn't fit? And your mind will tell you that. So you need to practice listening to that. So And if they knock on the door, this is very, very, this is very common. If you look up YouTube uh, criminals that teach about burglaries, they'll say they do tests. So either during the daytime or during the nighttime or whenever they choose is the best time. It often, burglaries often happen during the day because everyone's at work or at school. So to double check that no one's home, They'll knock on doors. They'll just go all the way down the street, start knocking on doors. And one of the most common things they say is, oh, hey, is uh, John home? And you go, who? No, there's, John doesn't live here. And then they're looking in your front door. They're looking at what's, you know, what type of security you have. They're looking to see if you have a dog. They're looking to see if you keep your watch and your <coughs> keys right by the front door. And they're talking to you, and they're scratching their head. And they're like, yeah, yeah no, I heard uh, John. I was supposed to meet John here. And you're like, John don't live here. And they're like, okay, okay, well, I'll... You know, is there some, do you know where he might live? And they're looking and they're asking something's wrong. That is Mm -hmm. not normal. Um, Mm -hmm. so this is an extra step. So once they start talking to you, you know, don't, don't invite them into your house. Keep the door. I open the door an inch or two. I keep my, my gun either at my hip or if I know something's weird, I'll, I'll open the door a little more. I'll keep it visible. I won't point my gun at someone if I don't have to, but I'll like, usually that changes the tone pretty quick. Um, and what that is, that's a, that's a test. Like that's them getting Intel on your house. And even if they don't get mm-hmm. in when you open the door, that's a way for them to get you to open the door so they can see behind your curtains on your windows. So they can look deep into the house so they can listen for a dog. It's, it's a test. So your protocol is before you open the door, see whatever you can see. When they start talking, if something's weird, ask them to explain it. Cause a normal person will explain it. If they go, Hey, is John here? You go, where'd you come from? And they go, uh, I, I was, I was in the neighborhood. That's not what I asked you. Where did you come from? If Did you drive here? Yeah. Well, yeah. <clears throat> Where's your car? Or they, I'd say, no, I walked here. Where'd you walk from? Well, down the street. Down the street where? So something's clearly wrong. This doesn't add up. Mm-hmm. So ask questions. Listen to yourself. And listen, it's your fucking home, okay? It's your front door. It's your home. And you owe these people nothing, whether they're wearing a UPS uniform or whether, if, even if they're in a, in a police uniform. If they have a warrant to break down your front door, they're going to do it without your permission anyways. So for the moment, this isn't legal advice. This is just something you might want to consider. I don't think there's any bad time, if you feel uncertain about something, to, to tell them, get the fuck out, I'm shutting my door, and slam your door shut and lock it. And check all your windows, mm-hmm. and check all your back doors, and your upstairs windows, and make sure your shit's secure. So another way they'll do this is they'll target a lot of like older people, or people that are less of a threat if they're home by themselves, and this is a two-person deal. Like you said, like you saw with your buddy, someone came from around the house. Um, this one is a lot of times people will do estimates for services or installs or things like that. So number one is you should be scheduling all of that yourself. No one mm-hmm. else schedules that for you and shows up and says, "Hey, uh, I was here to install this for you." Well, if it's a legitimate business and you go, you know what, you're gonna come have to come back at a different date a legitimate business will go okay and they'll leave someone that wants something from in your house is going to go no 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 i have to be here and it should just be one back and forth where they're you're like no no this ain't right um so hmm. this two-person tactic is one person will knock on the front door and they'll say hey i'm doing uh backyard maintenance would you like to give me a i'll give you a free estimate and i'll even dig your first hole for you in your backyard and plant a plant and you go oh that sounds good so you walk in the front door they walk in the front door they shut the front door behind them, but they don't lock it. And the two of you go to the back of the house. And they go, oh, are you by yourself today? And you go, yeah. And they go, okay. So the two of you walk to the backyard. 
and you stand in the backyard while person number two walks right in your unlocked front door, goes right in your kitchen, goes right in your bedroom, goes to your jewelry box, grabs your wallet or your keys from the front door, drives away in your car, whatever. So it's a two-person tactic. That actually hit my zone uh, about two years ago, but right before my deployment, we got some intel briefs that that was going on. Hmm. And they'll usually wow. they'll usually do it in spurts. Well, they'll hit like one house and then the next house and then the next house in one neighborhood. And then they'll go like across town and do it again that same day. And then they'll leave the area. It's not all the time, but usually that's how it'll happen. So door protocol. Teach your kids what does and doesn't look normal when they answer the front door. Show them by example what you do with visitors. Um, uh, if your <clears throat> wife is home alone or if you're or if the husband's home alone or if the kids are home alone, you establish your own safety protocols, whatever they are. Read a book, go to a class, um, ask, do a ride along, and ask police. You know what they can recommend. But some things you might want to consider are, you know, you look out the front window, you go, something's weird. Like if you're if you get UPS every day at two p.m. and oh, suddenly today at two p.m. a box shows up at the front door, you're probably good, right? If you never get packages, or if it's someone that's not a mail carrier and they bring a package to your front door. You enact your protocol. You go, okay, let me get on the phone and call my safety person, whether it's a spouse or a loved one or, I don't know, some like your neighbor, right? Call your neighbor and say, hey, can you come over for a sec? I'm getting a package, and I just want you to help me carry it. Make something up. So step one could be something like get on the phone before you answer your door if something feels weird. Number two is don't open the door all the way. Uh, and there's a bunch of different ways we can exp- get deeper into that later. Number three would be ask them questions before you lo- allow them to go in or around your house. Number four would be uh, if something f- always have an es- always have a uh, an escape plan, right? Not escape like oh I need to run, but like at any point you need to know you can shut that door and tell them to come back later, right? So all sorts of things mm-hmm. like that you can do for front door protocol. I went long on that one. Sorry, fellas. No, no, no. That was like just packed full of value. I appreciate that. Um, I have a little it, anecdote. Uh-huh. I uh, We were at my parents' house. It was a couple of Christmases ago, close to Christmas. We were over there, I don't know, it's probably nine o'clock or something. And they live out in the middle of nowhere. And there had been burglaries around the area. <clears throat> and we had a a uh, white minivan pull up mm-hmm. in the driveway and drove to the back of the driveway where the cars are parked. Didn't stop close to the front door or anything. Drove all the way in the back. And this is, you know, 9, 9.30 at night. So, you know, we did what any <laughs> what we would normally do. We grabbed guns and and go out there and... and uh, <laughs> around the house <laughs> we heard a we heard the sliding door of the side door of the minivan open you know and and i come around the corner and shove a an ar in this lady's face and ask her what the fuck she's doing and she turns around she freaks out she's like i'm with fedex i'm with fedex i'm with fedex she had no markings on her car she had no uh fedex um clothing <laughs> But she had FedEx boxes, and she delivered like four packages to this. Oops, hit the spring. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but we, how are we supposed to know? You know, there's burglaries going on at night, and this random car pulls up. They didn't honk. They didn't let anyone know. Hey, we're coming. You know, we're here. Hello. And yeah, so you, you know. <laughs> wow. The area I live in. If you do stuff like that, you're gonna get guns in your face. <laughs> she he probably sold herself yeah he, right and we, you know, we, we, that... we explained to her too like you need to honk when you come into driveways everyone yeah. is armed around here and you're going to end up getting shot so Holy let's cow. be a little smarter about this <laughs> <laughs> she had to get new underwear poor thing <laughs> so on, on that note and, and what Pat was saying you know I think this kind of goes without saying, especially with our audience, um, you know, it's it, interactions at the front, you know, it's, it's no place for, uh, politeness. I mean, you know, if you, like you said, if you have to slam the door in someone's face, tell them to fuck off or whatever, like we got to be prepared to do that because 
things could escalate pretty quickly. So it's it's not a place for, oh, you know, please leave, blah, 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 to be kind of uh, meager about things. Um, one thing I thought of, Pat, when you were talking, given that great information, was something that I've sort of adjusted with all the kind of squirrely that's going on in my homestead is I no longer leave the blinds open. Yes. Uh, you know, especially when I'm not here. I, I really don't even leave them open when I'm at home, but everything is closed. So if someone goes poking around, like gets in my yard and goes poking around, well, they can't peep, you know, what's in my house when I'm not here. That's huge. So yeah, kind of like what you said when they knock on the door and, Hey, is Joe Bob there? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I want to prevent them from being able to do that when I'm not here by looking in the blinds and whatnot. So Um, um, I watched, I recently watched an interview with a, a guy in jail that was really big, like really prolific burglar. And he part of his lessening of his sentence was to cooperate with police and teach people how he commits burglaries. And along with that front door intel knock that he does on all the houses down the street, he'll also look through the windows. So, and he said, listen, he's like, why would I break into a house when I don't know what's in it? And he said, if there are houses that I can see into, I can assess them as a target, right? So if I can see right through the window, I can either say there's nothing in there I want or even if it's stuff that you don't think burglars will take, sometimes they'll take it, right? So Mm -hmm. they can look in and say, oh, that's where they keep this. That's where they keep that. I can get intel or I can see if someone's home or not, which is huge, or I can see if there's something I really want. So one of the best ways to keep keep people from choosing your house as a target is for them to not know what's inside of it. So let's talk windows for a second. Yes, your window shades... They need when you're when you're not keeping them open for the breeze during the daytime or whatever. When it's appropriate, close them, and also just be curious. I mean, act like be interested in your own security. Walk around your house during the daytime and during the nighttime because they're both different. And walk around your house at night and realize, oh, those little holes in my blinds, you can see right through them into my room if you put your eyeball up close to it. And that'll start to teach you, well, how do I keep people away from the window at night? You know, do I point the light? on the outside of my house towards the windows or away from the windows? And do I put bushes there so people can hide behind the bushes and look into the window and with the security of the leaves around their face? Or do I put gravel by the window and move the bushes away from the windows? Like all these things will start to come to you, but you got to be curious about it. So close your window shades when appropriate. And number two is, especially if it's by your front door, um, like you usually your back sliding glow, your back sliding doors, if you have if you have those on your house, and then your your front glass doors that are like, a lot of times I don't know why why they do that, but you'll have a front door, and right next to the handle, you have little glass windows. The people break out the window, reach in, and open the handle. Right. So two things: one is your window shades need to be shut when it's appropriate, and number two is if you're worried about a window getting smashed in, uh, I think 3M makes a really good window film that will take a freaking Mm. beating from baseball bats and crowbars and things like that. And it's not very expensive and it's not very difficult to install. So that might be something you want to look into. Ooh, that's a great idea. 3M window film. And and I also like that suggestion of not only during the daytime, Mm -hmm. kind of do a walk around, but at nighttime, because that makes me think, um, you know, anyway, that, that's a great idea. I'm gonna have to do that. Um, also, in this discussion, one of my future purchases, I want to get a set of cameras. So they kind of, especially on the front, at the front door, so I can kind of see, you know, without maybe looking out the blinds, letting people know I'm, you know, looking at them, but I can kind of see what's going on at the front door without having to open it up. Um, that's one of my future purchases. Do you guys uh, have any thoughts on that or? Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you about that. I've got uh, okay. a list of stuff for you. One more future purchase idea that's, you know, <laughs> some people may think is overkill, but I do at some point want to get a <clears throat> first person viewer quadcopter that I can, you know, deploy from maybe a <laughs> side window. I'm, I'm serious. Dude, put a taser on that thing. <laughs> Why not? You know, we, we, when we were recording episode 30, I heard something banging around outside my side, you know, the side of my home. And then it was banging around on top. It's probably a raccoon or something. But 
you know, if I could, if I had a quadcopter, it was first person viewer and I could just deploy it and kind of fly it around and kind of see what's going on while still being secure inside. That would be, that would be an awesome tool. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, I've, I've done uh, a lot of research on cameras and stuff because of the store and yeah, I found an awesome setup that I'm going to put in the store and the house. And I mean, I wish I could remember offhand the name of this stuff, but I've got it written down somewhere, so I'll, I'll get that to you. Well, there's so many nowadays that are that are so much more effective than the old school alarm systems. So oh yeah, um, the first one I'm going to actually put a link if I can make sure it's the right one. I'm looking at something called Ring R I N G. It's a front door yeah doorbell camera. camera yeah. Yeah, and does all sorts of cool shit. I'm just gonna put a link and let you figure it out on your own, but it's really fucking cool. Um, if you guys <laughs> will let me, there's a really good Pat rant you might be familiar with about alarm systems. Let's do it. Oh yeah, let it rip. So while it's a good step to have your like old school like 1980s, 1990s, like I use Brink Home Security or whatever fucking system, right? You put a little sign in your front yard. You put a little sign on your window. It's good. It's good. It stops some criminals before they even start, right? It's a good step. Um, What you don't want to do is write the code to your code box right next to the code on a sticky note and hang it there. I've seen people do that quite frequently. Uh, Businesses are famous for doing that because so many different employees close and open the business. And for such like frequent turnover, they go just punch in the code that's right next to it. Okay. Um, So your standard home security systems like 1980s, 1990s, Here's what happens. Bad guy breaks into your house. Alarm goes off. So now we start the clock. This is going to sound familiar because I'm going to say it a thousand times. Tick tock, tick tock, right? Something bad's happening inside your home. Tick tock, tick tock. Someone making minimum wage halfway across the country or sometimes the globe will get an alert on their computer screen if they're paying attention. They'll click on that and then all your information gets pulled up. And I say all your information, it's kind of some of your information. So you're supposed to give your alarm company, here's the first huge piece of value. You're supposed to give your alarm companies good information and a lot of information. Like, what's your address? What's your act active phone number? What's a backup phone number? What's a next of kin? What is what we call a key holder? What is someone that's not you that has a key to your home? So that when law enforcement shows up, we can say, uh, is there a key holder that would like to open the door for us so we can poke our nose in, make sure that no one's tied up in the closet, and then we leave and we lock the door. So someone that will give law enforcement access to your home for you. And I, some people that are crazy anti-law enforcement, blindly anti-law enforcement is probably a better word. They're like, oh, how, no, I would never let them. In. Listen, if your alarm goes off and we can't get in your house and something bad's going on inside your house, like even if it's a criminal by himself, all he has to do is walk in, shut the door and lock it behind them and get out of sight. And there's if there's no key holder to give me access to your house, I often cannot access your house. There's nothing I could do but look in the windows and walk away. So TikTok, TikTok, right? Some minimum wage worker gets a notification on his screen and he picks up the phone. Sometimes their policy is to call the number on their screen, which is the homeowner. Well, you might not pick up because you might be tied up in the closet or because you're out of town or you're on vacation in Bermuda and there's no cell service, right? So they can't get a hold of you. Then after that, tick tock, tick tock, time's winding down. Bad things are happening. No one's helping you. After that, they'll call the police for your jurisdiction. So they have to look up the number and that number has to be right and unchanged. So they contact the dispatch center. A lot of people don't know that most dispatch centers in big cities have more than one uh, person of contact that you deal with on 911. So oftentimes it's like a you have a general dispatcher that takes a call and then he goes, okay, do you need police or fire or EMS or something else? So that dispatcher takes the call and while you have to answer his standardized questions in order, he has to type it down, he has to click shit on a screen, tick tock, bad things are happening, no one's helping. Then he sends you to another dispatcher. So time's still ticking by when someone potentially has broken into your house. Now the next dispatcher goes, hey, the first question is, are there any units, police units, that are available 
to go check your house because people don't know this, but we're not always available. There's oftentimes every single police officer in your jurisdiction is busy doing something. So they go, hey, who's available to go check this alarm? And sometimes the, sometimes the answer is nobody. And alarm calls, unless something very specific happens, alarm calls are usually very low priority if we're all busy doing other stuff. If someone's free, of course we're going to go check it out. Uh, if someone's busy, we're like, yeah, we'll get to it. You know, when we get to it. So Because most of the time it's a false call. Oh, my God. Probably 99 times out of 100 or more than that. So probably a yeah. percentage higher than that. It's false false alarm. Yeah. Um, here are some things that will make it less of a false alarm indicator to us. Number one is glass break. So usually when we hear glass break, we know they're, those are usually pretty reliable. So we know someone's breaking the glass on this home. Um, what's not usually an emergency for us is like an interior only or an exterior only or something like a garage door or zone one or zone two. So this is your next piece of intel or next piece of value that as a listener, you can take action today for free if you have one of those alarm systems and update it so that you can help law enforcement help you. So a lot of times we don't even know where the alarm in the house is that was activated. So when you call your alarm company and you set it up, sometimes they're just like the install guy will go, okay, uh, well, I'm gonna put these sensors all over the house just in order and just kind of pick, oh, here's one. This one says one on it. I'll put this over here. This one says zone two. I'll put it over there. So when I get called as an officer, they go, uh, there's an alarm in zone two. And I go, great. It's a big house. Where's zone two? And dispatch obviously goes, we don't know. And I go, okay, can you call the alarm company back? Because they've hung up already. Can you call the alarm company back and figure that out? The alarm company has no idea. They don't, they don't fucking write that shit down. They don't know. Their job is they're doing their job. Alarm in zone two goes off. I tell the police it's zone two. So you can call your alarm company and say, hey, what zones do I have listed? What labels are on my different alarms in my house? Can I test them? Can you check them for me? Can we update them? So that when your back, so your when your internal garage door opens, it says internal garage door. So that when your side door of the house opens, it'll say side door north side instead of side instead of you know zone C. So call your companies. Ask them what they have on file for you and ask them how you can verify that and update it. So get a key holder and put their active, correct information in your alarm company's file. And then also make sure your zones are updated in your house for which alarm, which little um, sensor piece on which window and which door. Make sure it explains that so that when the police show up and your back window has been smashed in and it just says zone B glass break, if you have a fence around your house and I'm, I can't jump that fence or break that fence or get in, All I can do is look at your front door, look at your front window and go, it looks good and walk away. So that's the next part is your, your zones. Uh, A lot of times with a key holder, an alarm company will either have phone numbers for a key holder or secondary phone numbers for next to kin or for you, the homeowner. And a lot of times they won't release those phone numbers to law enforcement. So sometimes there's a little checkbox in their file on their computers because they're just minimum wage workers. Sometimes there's check marks in those boxes where you need to tell the alarm company, yes, when law enforcement calls you, you can give them this info. Because a lot of times I'm like, something's weird here. Can you call a key holder? And my dispatch person will get on their phone and call the alarm company. And the alarm company will say, I'm sorry, we can't give you that information. So then that information serves you no good. So a lot of people don't know that either. So if you put a key holder down, a lot of times it's just administrative. It's not to help you when your alarm goes off and your alarm company won't tell you that. So all this is going on, tick tock, tick tock. Now here's another thing. This one's tough. This is a double edged knife, double edged sword, whatever. So I mentioned a fence, right? A lot of times we're supposed to do a perimeter walk when an alarm goes off on a house, no matter where the alarm goes off at. Um, if we can't see all of your doors and windows from the front of your house, or if you have a fence that we can't look through, like if it's a high fence and it's a wooden fence, a lot of times we're not justified in jumping over that fence to investigate further. So although this is double-edged, although your fence can provide privacy for you, it can also mean that if you have an alarm system and it goes off, we can't do a thorough inspection of at least the outside of your house. So a lot of times we'll say in our report, I arrived at the house, I didn't know what the hell zone C meant, so I tried to do a walk around. 
and everything that I can <laughs> see looked fine. So I walked away. And you or your loved ones could be in there tied up. And there's n- morally and and protocol wise and legally, there there's nothing I, c- I can't do more. Unless I have a reason, a specific reason known to me to do more, I can't. I can't do more. So I do the best I can. I walk around the perimeter. I look in the windows if I can. And I go, it appears fine. Bye. And there are cases. I mean, they're often enough that I've, I know of some that an alarm goes off or the police go to your house and they can't get in and they don't have a contact with a key. So they walk around the house, they look in the windows and they go, looks good. And there are people inside that fucking need help. So wow, be aware of that. Uh, what else am I missing? This all takes time. So if you're thinking that like on the commercial, the alarm goes off, wee, 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 and the alarm company guy picks up the phone and goes, 911, respond. And then as the bad guy's running away, the police show up. <laughs> Not accurate. Sometimes it I like sometimes those calls take 20, 30, 40 minutes. And like I said, it also depends on if police are free, if they're not busy doing other shit. And it's not that you're not important. It's that we, a lot of times we can't just say, hey, I'm here at this traffic crash directing traffic. Oh, got to go. Bye. Like, that doesn't always happen. I like the uh, commercials oh, I that love them. have the, the security alarms over. They, they get over the little intercom and they're like, XYZ security company, leave right now. And the, the, burglar shits himself and runs out <laughs> so, here's some more value too um while it's not bad to have those systems i don't think it's a bad thing and i don't think it hurts you to have the system just make sure you're using it to the best of your ability i think what's often um of more value is to install your own system yes and to be able and for a for you to be able to access it and to get notifications on it and to use it correctly and b to have someone outside of your home to have the ability to access it and to get notifications. So if one of my friends, let's say, if you guys give me access to your alarm systems, right? And let's say there's some type of video feed and some type of notification, right? Maybe you're in your house or maybe you're on vacation and maybe it's not even connected to an alarm company and it's not even connected to 911, right? So I go, oh shit, I just got a notification. Oh, his alarm was set and his alarm went off. And I'm, it's either Ox or Jack, one of you two, right? And I go, weird. And I press the button. And I don't, obviously don't want to be able to see into your bedroom, but like maybe out your front door would be good. And I've clicked a notification, and there's two dudes with masks that walk up to your front door. And then your front door alarm goes off, and I get that video. Well, I can mm. save that video, which is important. I can get on Google real quick and call your county or your city, wherever you live, and say, listen, I have video footage with a timestamp right now. It's happening right now at this address. You guys need to get out there. That is just as effective as an alarm company calling the police. Like, there's no difference in believability. Like, there's no difference in title or certification. It doesn't matter. Oh, wow. The police get a call that says, here's an address. Here's an event. Go check it out. It doesn't matter if it comes from an alarm company or a concerned citizen or someone out of town. We get those all the time. And honestly, I don't want an alarm company having cameras that they can access in my home. Most people don't have cameras inside their home unless it's like inside the front door towards the front door. Um, I wouldn't recommend that either. Um, I would do uh, motion sensors inside my home would be, wouldn't bother me at all. Um, but like actual video cameras, unless it was somewhere, like I said, just inside the front door, looking down at the inside of the door would be, I think really appropriate, but, or maybe just outside the back glass door. If you have a, sliding door in the back or like maybe in your garage wouldn't bother me but um definitely the i mean people can't get in your house without walking up to your house so definitely Mm -hmm. on the perimeter of your house and it helps your neighbors too because oftentimes when we see a, a trend like if we see a burglary streak right like if one street gets 10 cars robbed in one night robbed burgled whatever you call it (laughs) <laughs> so what we'll do is in our investigation we'll talk to the homeowners that were victims we'll see if they have cameras and if they don't we'll check all their neighbors houses we'll walk up and down the street and say oh that guy has a camera he's not the victim of the crime but hey let's talk to him hey do you have a system hey can you record that hey can you print that out on a disc or a thumb drive so that we can help your neighbors and more often than not they go yeah we'd love to help so i go hey last night between you know 8 p.m and 4 a.m they got robbed burgled can you print me a copy of all that time and I'll put it in the evidence file while it's 
detectives will look at it. We'll put out intel bulletins, and they're like, yeah, 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 I'd love to help. So that's definitely of more value than just helping yourself. Yep. So there's my alarm that's rant. Pretty, that's, that's pretty good, cool. It's a good rant. Yeah, a lot of value in there. Very good. Um, one thing I thought of earlier, Pat, when you mentioned like do a walk around at night is I've kind of no, and this might be real basic for everyone, but I remember coming up to my home one evening and I thought, you know, there's a lot of darkness right there on the side of the house. I need to put a light. So just going around the property and, and finding spots that aren't illuminated well and just being like, you know what? I need to put some light there. Just kind of, you know, bring some light to this certain area. And I have some motion activated uh, floodlights that come on in the backyard that point toward the alley. So, um, you know, one thing to keep in mind if if anybody in the audience hasn't done that yet. Yeah, criminal, criminals hate hate bright white lights. They're not fans. <laughs> Let's see. Um, this one's short. You might like this one. Um, yeah. If you move into a house and you... If it's not a house that you built yourself, or even if it is, uh, it's a good idea to do maybe annually if you've lost a couple keys. If you've handed out keys to family members or friends, it's a good idea to do occasionally if you're kind of like really wanting to do some spring cleaning. Uh, Just change the locks on your home. I know it's tough to do in certain apartments or leased homes, um, but even if you have like, even if you're renting an actual house from a renter, Oftentimes mm-hmm. they won't like they'll they'll allow you to change your front door locks or just don't fucking say anything as long as it's what you're doing is within your contract and legal. Um, just change your locks, change your keys. Go buy a lock that looks exactly like the lock that you have, and then yeah. when the landlord comes up, be like, Dude, maybe you got the wrong key. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and then just be clear with your landlord too if you're renting or if you have an apartment. Be clear when they can and cannot come into your into your residence when you're there, when you're not and see if you can adjust that. And Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some, it's, it's a lot of times like maintenance people, um, that have access to homes that go in and out of them all the time. Some of them are really, really great people. Some of them are not. So if that's something that'll happen, especially in apartments, because maintenance people, sprinkler people, bug people, oftentimes they just get handed a master key from the front gate. Um, and they go in, they do their thing. Just be aware of what you do and don't keep out when you're not home. And just mm-hmm. try and be aware of, hey, they're gonna do the fuck they're gonna fix the plumbing in this whole building next week. Okay, well maybe I put my jewelry box in the safe and leave it there for a week. Or hey, my gun that I usually leave right on top of my nightstand, I'll put it in my nightstand this week. Things like that. That's a great reminder too. So change the locks and be aware of who has access to your house. I saw something on, I was poking around on Facebook past couple of days and I some, saw something that definitely is going on my wish list and that is a motion activated sprinkler. And I thought that would be, that's so cool. That could be one nice little layer to add to the, you know, homestead, uh, defense or protection. So, uh, <laughs> that's definitely going on my, dude, man, that's, that's good for chicken coops too. What do you guys think? Anything yeah. on your wish list? Uh, that doorbell thing I really like. I'm I'm actually renting a room with a a good buddy of mine, my roommate. It's, it's his home, so I'm not doing too many um, permanent adjustments to the security here. Um, I really do like this front door video doorbell though a lot. It's got a lot mm-hmm. of really cool features. Hmm. Well, I'll have to look that up. There's going to be, um, I'll put a link in the show notes. Cool. I pulled up that 3M window film. Looks like uh, that's pretty interesting. There's some different, different types of that. Uh, um, go ahead. Are there, can you think of any ways, can you guys think of any ways to, if someone kind of gains access to your property or even inside the home, God forbid, are there any ways to slow them down you know what I mean? Like I, I think of in the backyard to put any kind of like, I don't know, maybe it's silly, but like, I don't know, trip wires or like uh, bird netting that might, you know, they might not see, but it could trip them up a little bit and slow them down. 
a tad. You guys have any take on that? Mm. Have you seen anything, Pat, in your, you know, visiting homes that you thought maybe, man, that that would slow someone down? That's that's kind of a good idea. Uh, yeah, uh, this is actually the last thing on my bullet point list. So oh, perfect. There's different types of doors. So I teach my tactical lock picking course, and we. I don't teach it as its own segment, but you learn it as we progress, but it's called door reading. So it's knowing what, what the actual big meaty part of a door is made of, whether it's like a punched, you know, fake wood with a bunch of empty space in it, like faux plastic and with a wood design, uh, or whether it's an actual lightweight wood door or whether it's a heavy Oak or whether it's metal or it's a metal coating or like all sorts of different actual door material. Um, one of the simplest and most effective ways to upgrade your physical security on any of the doors in your home, um, even from getting kicked in, like, so even the privacy doors for like your bathroom or your bedroom probably are not very solid, but you can make them more solid with something very simple. I'll, I'll make sure I put that in the show notes too. YouTube video. There's a YouTube video where a guy explains it. Um, a lot of times when you kick in a door, the only thing you're kicking through is where the latch sticks out of your door right Mm -hmm. that little latch that one inch deep latch that slides into that little latch strike plate like a little plate with the hole in it that's in the frame so a lot of times you're just kicking that little latch through about an inch or two of maybe like a lightweight plywood so when you're kicking Mm -hmm. in a door you're not kicking in the whole frame you're not kicking in the hinges a lot of times you're just pushing that piece of metal through about an inch of plywood so what you do is you you buy you unscrew your standard screws from that little latch strike plate. It's like that plate with the curved edge, the curved lip that when you close the door, the latch hits it. Yeah. And that's in the door frame. So you take those original screws out. Usually they're very short, like about an inch or less. So you get some three-inch screws, and you drill them into the door frame and into whatever um, whatever stud is behind that. Oh. And it makes your door Fair almost enough. three or four times more difficult to kick open. Mm-hmm. instantly oh, that's it's very sweet. cheap it's very fast i can't think of any policy anywhere on any type of homeowner or apartment agreement that would make that like you, you'll never know unless you unscrew those screws and look at them so that's something that even if you're a renter you can really quickly update your physical security on your front door and every other door in your house mm-hmm. oh that's awesome that's really cool uh you I'm we putting, should all be doing that actually i'm putting that on my to-do that. list right now really what? easy really fast my doors have that good uh, the next step up from that would be a door devil, um, and that is a latch strike plate that goes all the way up your frame and all the way down your frame, like from top to bottom, and it's got several long screws. So that that makes it so, so even multiples more than that difficult to kick your door in. Mm. Um, and I do teach a lot of cool, weird ways to get into obstacles and doors and locks, um, but that thing, if you're talking about a brute force attack like there's videos of SWAT teams with battering rams that try and hit doors in that that door frame will just fucking take a serious beating so with the uh, door devil uh yeah the door mm-hmm. devil okay That's wicked man um sweet as soon as i get out of a renting situation and get in my own place that's the very first thing i'm installing it's a super it's not very expensive it's the first thing i'm st- installing it's easy to install it's permanent and you'll never know it's there it's not something that you have to go out of your way every day to deal with which is a problem for security. So I really like that problem. I mean, that product because security is a balancing act between um, your ease of access and your difficulty of access. You have to balance right. both. So a lot of times, even very secure facilities, so many different people need to access it that they have a security protocol in place, but they adjust it to make it easier for people to get in and out. And what that does, it just weakens the product. So things like key codes that have really simple key codes. Oh, so many people use it, so we just made it easy to remember. Well, it's also easy to guess. So things like that. Uh, the door devil, you'll never know it's there once you install it. It's not something you have to go out of your way to turn on and off every day, which is nice. Set it and forget it. Very cool. That's the last thing I'm on pull- my list. I'm, I'm pulling it up to look at now. <laughs> Lots of uh, Yeah, so check the show notes today, folks, for some really cool links. Or devil. I'll make sure this goes in there. 
And if you have questions about this, about your own house, think like a burglar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the best way to figure out what what can you, you the weaknesses in your house. Just think like a burglar. What would you do if you needed to break into your house? And do a walk around. Be curious about your own home. A lot of times people take for granted, oh, I can't see out my window at night when the blinds are closed. And then on the outside of your house, you walk up to your windows at night when the lights are on, and you can see 30, 40, 50% of your room if you just look at the gap between the edge of your curtains and the wall. So yeah, Mm -hmm. most of your room might be covered with the blinds, but you can see all the way down one wall, and you go to the other side of the window, you can see all the way down the other wall. So you don't, I mean, it doesn't have to be Fort Knox. But, you know, experiment. And it, you can use it in a good way, too. If you're in a relationship, you can say, hey, let's do some new drapes. Oh, that would be great. Hey, why don't we hang something on the edge of these blinds, you know, to keep the mm-hmm. sunlight out in the morning? Because it's pretty and we can do pink. Oh, I don't fucking know. <laughs> but, I mean, just be, <laughs> be curious about no, it. No, that's a great reminder. That makes me think of a weakness in my setup, you know, not having done a walk around at night looking at the blinds to see what I can, you know, what I can look through and, 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 and scope out. No, that's great. People, and if you're doing a walk around, people get this one wrong so often, which is put bushes by your windows to keep people away from your windows. But what that does is that provides cover and concealment, not cover, mm. provides concealment so that burglars, if they stand between your bushes and the window, can't be seen from the street. So my, mm. best, my recommendation is you put some crunchy shell you pour it around your window for a few we- a few feet, like a big arc. So you put <laughs> shell around the window. You put no bushes there. You put a light at the top or the bottom of the window facing away from the house so it lights up the wall and the ground near it. And you fucking put your bushes somewhere else. And you can make it look pretty, too. It doesn't have to... I mean, your house doesn't have to look ugly like an old castle. Just have fun, experiment, you know, YouTube it. And then on top of that, you can add another layer to the shells. You can get a couple of tack roosters and just <laughs> <laughs> keep them uh, keep them outside, keeping your home safe. Hey, you know um, <laughs> that uh, automated or uh, motion sensor sprinkler. Oh, that man, would, that would be good for chicken coops. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, keep, something comes around. Keep, yeah, Predator? like oh yeah. yeah, predators. Oh, that's good because I've got uh, uh, raccoons around here yeah. in the city. In the city of all places, uh, that's a great bears in the city. <laughs> I don't. Did we see any when we went there? I don't remember any. I think you did. We had we had a bear in our chicken coop, and oh, September, that's right. August. Yeah, yeah. was long after y'all left. Yeah. Well, I. Don't know about you guys, but I now have some more stuff on my to-do list. So I learned some stuff tonight. I appreciate you guys, Uh, Pat, Jack. I mean, some good stuff, man. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. very good. I loved it. I think this one's overdue. This is definitely core content, and I'm happy to share it. Yep. Yeah. Well, if uh, you guys, the audience, have found value in today's show, like we said earlier, please share it with some friends. Visit our website, libertymastermindpodcast.com. Uh, look around there. We've got tons of different episodes, lots of different topics. Fill in the guest form if you want to come on the show. Rate and review us on iTunes. What else, guys? Get involved. Leave us a comment on whatever platform you're on or write us an yep. email. Boom. 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 <laughs>